Hey, what's up guys? New glasses. Check that out. You know, move to Austin, Texas, get hipster glasses, eat out of food trucks every day, just part of the territory. So this is the second episode of Behind the Mic, the interview show for a lot of the uh, internet music talent that we come across on the open mic shows. But we just, we want to take a closer look, pick the brains of some of these artists that we're familiar with, and just generally have a nice little conversation. So this will be a really fun episode. We've got uh, three people that we're interviewing. We've got Jacob Daring from Siberia and Russia, I believe. We've got Fernando Mora, who's from Colombia. And we have Jonathan Hubbard. He's been on the show before. He's from Nacogdoches, Texas. Not too far from here, actually. Hmm. So we're gonna hear their stories, hear a bit about them, and we'll link you to their stuff in the description below. Let's just get right into it. So first up we have Jacob D. He's from Russia. Welcome to the show, Jake. Hi. Thanks for having me on the show. It's really great to be here. I'm so excited to hang out with you. No, it's great having you on the show. Just give everybody your name, channel, and uh, what instrument you play, that kind of thing. My name is Jacob Daring. Uh, to be short, I brand myself as uh, Jacob D, which is the name of my channel. Uh, I play classical guitar, uh, although I was always a little bit too lazy to learn classical pieces. So, the way I preferred to learn uh, guitar was uh, composing original music. Uh, and I, I'd be, I've been doing this for, I think, uh, 20 years. So, yeah. Original music is what I basically post on my channel. That's cool. I really like, um, I like having people on the show that do original music. Not that, uh, in, you know, covers can be pretty interesting, but it's nice to, nice to have people that are doing that as well. Um, where are you from originally? I live in Brnaul. Uh, this is a relatively big Siberian city in the very middle of Russia. To be honest, it's not the most comfortable place for living, but, you know, I was born here, all my relatives live here, uh, we have our family business here, so I guess I'm just gonna stick with this place. Yeah, yeah, I, could, uh, I can imagine it being fairly inhospitable there at times, but you make it look great. What's one album that you've just listened to over and over and just, you can just, you love it so much you just wear it out? I think uh, the last album I listened to at Nauseam was uh, Four Walls and an Amplifier by Brock Berrigan. Hmm. I don't think I've heard that one, but I do love music recommendations. Kind of why I asked this question, actually. Uh, anyone watching this, you can link me to some stuff in the comments and I'll check it out. Um, what uh, what would you say was kind of the genesis of you getting into music or just how you became interested in the first place? Hmm, how did I become interested in music? Um, you know, I was born in 1981. Those were... Uh, totalitarian communist times in my country and uh, most of the Western music was not legally accessible. So I remember in our home we had uh, some bootleg cassette tapes with uh, Michael Jackson's Thriller and Bad albums. Uh, yeah, these really blew my mind when I first heard them. Uh, it was so powerful, so you know, liberating and simply fun. So yeah, I guess this was my first experience of really enjoying music. Wow, 1981. You definitely would have been old enough to uh, really kind of experience state communism like that. So that's, um, I've actually had, I had a friend that grew up in West Germany before the wall fell and all that. She has uh, a lot of memories, but it is true. A lot of people that grew up under communism kind of have a special appreciation for, like, music, because there's a very narrow selection of things musically were, like, even something they could hear. A lot of times they did have bootlegs and stuff like that. It's pretty interesting. 
Um, and yeah, Michael Jackson. Doesn't get more Western than that. Um, what, uh, what interests do you have, like, outside of music and stuff? I don't know. Probably drinking beer and uh, fooling around in the comment section of YouTube. I really like writing stupid comments. It often ignites uh, little fun conversations. So actually, I even challenge myself to write three or four comments uh, every day, simply because it's just a fun way to practice my English. Beer and English go well together, by the way. And as for my main occupation, um, I'm an architect. Yeah, I work in a small architectural firm down here in Barnaul. So designing buildings uh, is what I do seriously. Um, it is an interesting job, but it is uh, extremely time-consuming. And unfortunately it leaves uh, very little spare time for doing music which is my main hobby, of course. Yeah, funny story about that. Um, for a while, I was in a band. Actually, I was never officially in a band with them, but I had a musician friend that I jammed with a whole lot who had been an architect, but he quit to be a metal drummer. And uh, he, was, he was pretty good. We were pretty good friends and everything. Uh, still talk a bit, but uh, yeah. Must be interesting designing stuff out there, really gotta make it so that all those buildings can survive the cold and stuff, I would think. But no, that's cool. Very cool. Gotta have a, gotta have a hobby on the side. Well, who would you say is the most important person in your life? The most important person in my life is my boss at work, who also happens to be my father. Oh, hi mom, I love you too. I was about to say, don't leave Mama out of this one. Um, what would you say some of your favorite channels on YouTube are? You know, other than M3 Great Riffs, of course. I'm subscribed to hundreds of YouTube channels. It's really hard to pick just one. Maybe if we narrow it down to music-related channels, then I, I would like to point out a few ones that, in my opinion, deserve much more viewers than they currently have. Uh, the first one would be Felix Marin Jr., a uh, fingerstyle guitarist from the U.S. He has uh, amazing original compositions. Uh, I think he definitely has a, a unique style of his own. It's, I think, a mixture of classical jazz and probably Latin music. So yeah, definitely go check out his channel. Uh, I also want to mention Marco Pezzella. Uh, he's from Italy. He plays uh, classical guitar and he's a truly maestro guitarist. Uh, what I like about his channel is that he plays uh, fingerstyle arrangements of, I would say, uh, undeservedly lesser known songs. Uh, mostly of Italian origin. Uh, he makes a new video every week and for me personally it is almost uh, always a, a fun, uh, exciting discovery. It broadens my musical horizons. So Marco Pezzella, I strongly recommend his channel. Uh, and I want to, of course, uh, give a huge shout out to my friend Fernando Mora, aka Navarki, who brought me to this wonderful show. Yeah, there really is like quite a lot of really good music out there on YouTube. It's just like relatively unknown. It's amazing how much work people are putting into it. Um, it's kind of why I'm doing what I'm doing with this, including yourself. You know, there's just a lot of really great music that needs discovered and things, and plus, there's no central place to kind of see it all, unfortunately. Um, what's just like a random funny story from your life? Uh, this happened when I was uh, three years old. Um, early in the morning, my mom was taking me to the kindergarten in an overcrowded bus. There was an old lady sitting by me. Um, she started uh, kind of baby talking with me. 
like, uh, oh, what a lovely little boy, how old are you, honey? To which, for some reason, I answered, I am three years old and I'm gonna strangle you. This was a very awkward situation for my mom. Well, clearly we can see the cultural differences between there and here in the U.S. Because obviously, in the U.S., that's an extremely common thing for three-year-olds to say. What would you say is a musician that you really admire, even if it's just on a personal level? My idol is uh, Tommy Emanuel. Apparently, needless to say, he's a genius guitarist, amazing composer. But what I think is special about him uh, is uh, the way he interacts with his audience during his concerts. Somehow he manages to keep uh, eye contact with people uh, while playing his crazy finger style stuff. Uh, you know, his facial expressions, they, I think, greatly augment his music. Um, his chit chat between pieces is always on point and full of jokes. So, uh, apart from being a top musician, Tommy is a one of a kind entertainer. Yeah, it's really interesting you point that out because that's something I personally really like. Um, like, there's a band you may have heard of, um, Styx. They were arena, an arena rock band, and I've seen them seven or six or seven times live or something, mostly when I was young. And they had a double live album called Return to Paradise. And I grew up listening to all their classic hits, but live they like breathed a lot of new life into them. And plus they talked in between them and said all this stuff. You could just really feel that they were interacting with the audience in a great way. You know, that's kind of actually what I think really made Queen great, among many other things. You know, Freddie Mercury would just talk and interact with the audience, and he just had them like that in his hand, you know? They were just like, so engaged. It's a really underrated thing. So many people write all this music and get all serious, and they're just like, expect the audience to be really into what they're doing. You gotta put the work in to like, draw them in, but uh, Anyway, what's an instrument that you would really like to learn or you enjoy personally, but don't know? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, for many years I've been a huge fan of uh, country rock and generally guitar-centered music. Um, and I, I even used to be a little scornful about electronic music. Um, but to my own surprise, during the last year I started getting the taste of the electronic side of things probably due to some YouTube channels that I follow like Andrew Huang, Red Means Recording, uh, Boom Bap Art uh, and I gotta say I'm really curious about all, all the sophisticated gear these guys use and yeah I hope someday I'll get my hands on one of those uh, mysterious electronic machines. Yeah, there's a real art to making electronic music. I've recorded 10 albums where I played all the instruments and uh, really early on I started incorporating electronic elements in, into what I was doing, which is a very natural thing for me. Like a lot of my favorite bands are like Yes and Genesis and they were always experimenting with keyboards and really all kinds of stuff. And so I always liked that ethic of just exploring, but um, yeah, it's really hard to make electronic music that's actually engaging and interesting. It's just uh, so much of what is out there, not a lot, but some of it is really repetitive and kind of boring. It's not really meant to be listened to, so I do really admire those electronic artists that are good at that. What would you say, What's what was your first instrument? Well, uh, to be exact, it was not even an instrument. Uh, back in 1993, we bought our first uh, personal computer, and there was installed a primitive MS-DOS-based synthesizer program. It had a few instrument emulations, uh, some ready-made beats, 
the, the most cool thing about it was uh, an automatic accompaniment uh, depending on which note in a scale you press on a keyboard the computer would play an appropriate chord that was so much fun and I think it basically uh, kindled my passion for composing my own stuff nice early DOS commands I'm just old enough personally that uh, I was I grew up you know, doing things in DOS before Windows was even super mainstream. And there were a lot of cool old games and stuff. I can definitely imagine something like you're talking about probably really blow my mind back in the day. But uh, what's your favorite, like, chord or riff? Oh, I love G chord. It sounds so great. It works with C chord, with D chord. It goes well with beer, so... Yeah, G is my chord of choice. Hey, sometimes you can't beat the classics. I play a lot of G. It's not the only thing I play, but God, love me some G chord for sure. What, uh, do you play live? Or if you do, like, what's your favorite live performance you've ever done? Um, uh, I like composing stuff, but uh, I'm not a great live performer. I probably played a few times for a small group of friends, but nothing more. I've definitely played quite a bit before. I've done a tour, but I don't really love, um, I don't really love performance in the same way that I love writing. Like, I'm in music to write and create and stuff, and, like, performance is a little more of a pragmatic procedural thing. But, I mean, it's kind of its own art form in a way also, like how you're going to pull things off, how you're going to make something as entertaining as possible. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, I'm, I'm really more of a writer for sure. What's some advice you would have to people starting out just playing music advice kind of thing? I think it is useful to know why you want to do music, uh, if you want to make it your career, this is one strategy. If you want to do it just casually, simply for your own pleasure, this is a whole different mindset. So yeah, knowing your goal will definitely help you develop the right approach. It's true. Sometimes the end is in the beginning. Give a man a why and you can bear almost any how. But it's true, you know, you gotta have a, you gotta lay it out there for yourself and really understand why you're interested and, you know, for me, like, that was, I was just really into this music that I just could not play, this kind of music, progressive rock and a lot of other stuff. And I just used to stare at my guitar and think, someday I will know how to play you. And uh, so it was really motivating. Um, fun question. If you won $10 million or whatever the equivalent of $10 million, rubles perhaps, I don't know, um, what would you do with it? I would wallpaper my bedroom with $100 bills, install golden teeth implants, and send a selfie to my ex-girlfriend. Mm, putting a little stank on it. I like it attitude is everything what um plus i really like the wallpapering your walls with hundred dollar bills like hell yeah what's a random object that is your favorite color somewhere in your vicinity um i like space gray and uh you probably won't see it, but I actually have a few space gray hairs on my head. Space gray hairs. Way to rebrand that. Well, anyway, Jacob, everybody, really cool guy. Nice that we could just sit down and have a conversation. Everybody check out his music. He's got some great stuff up there. Like I said, channel in the description. And... Great having you, Jake. We'll figure out some uh, some way to have you back. It was such a pleasure being on the show. Thanks a lot for having me. Bye, guys.
All right, everybody, that was the man, the myth. Next, we have a, um, a veteran of the show, Fernando Mora, with his channel Navarquia. Plays a lot of fingerstyle classical guitar. You know him, you love him. And he's got a decent little following, too, so there's probably a lot of you guys out there, I don't know. But uh, we're having him on the show. You can finally peel back the onion that is the genius of Fernando Mora. Fernando, welcome to the show. Okay, first thing I'm going to say is thank you for having me on this show. I hope you will enjoy this interview. There are interesting questions and I hope you will be uh, really cultivated with the answers. Hey, I'm captivated already, man. What's the name of your channel and your name and everything? The name of my channel is Navarquia. I love uh, this name. I found on the internet, but I didn't find anything. So I choose it. And this channel is specifically about original songs. I challenge myself to put a, um, a crazy idea uh, to post one song every week. One original song every week. So I have my uh, schedule for the year. I will have five solo albums. Right now I am on the third uh, solo album. And I am really excited how people react with my music. I have a very good audience in a really around six months. Mm, yes, yeah, something like that. I'm, I'm feel happy and, and also with this interview is something that I appreciate uh, so much. Uh, thanks uh, for entries online open mic and the director Mark. Uh, he's an incredible a guy who has an incredible talent. Hey man, that's more than kind. Um, it's been, yeah, for anyone that doesn't know, we've been talking for kind of a long time, and when I got the idea to do this interview channel, he's one of the first people I talked to about it, um, interview show. Um, what instrument do you play and all that? Yeah, I only play the guitar. I know very basic thing about other instruments, basic charts, on keyboard, but just the guitar. But you definitely do just play the heck out of some guitar. It's really, I was gonna say, it's really amazing writing one of those finger style originals every week. Like, I'm not saying I couldn't do it, but uh, be a be a decent little challenge, especially doing other things with your life, you know? <laughs> like, if you're doing it full time, maybe it wouldn't be so bad, I don't know. But, um,. Yeah, what's what's one album that you've listened to over and over and just worn it out? I do not have a preference album. Some years ago, I used to hear albums, but nowadays I am only connected with YouTube, and there are really amazing um, artists. Yeah, I listen to a lot of uh, YouTube music. I mean, especially doing this, of course. Um, but yeah, there's tons of really interesting, like, independent artists and at various levels, you know, from people that are very, very beginner to, like, midway up there to, like, fully professional people. But it's lots of really great music. You gotta check it out. It's like being, I mean, part of the idea of the open mic is it's like, that's kind of what... YouTube music is. There's just like a bajillion people that are all really different that you can just listen to and I don't know, it's an interesting mix of things but um, let me see here. So how did you personally become interested in music? I like this question. I remember when I was 14 years old I saw in the house of my uh, parents a guitar, but that guitar was especially, it was broken, really old, and it all, almost totally destroyed. And you know, it has only three strings and oxidate. <laughs> so I remember that I moved the strings, oh, tone, I feel cultivated. 
uh, it's a magic thing. It was like a fine, a treasure, diamond, gold, all together. And the same feeling that uh, I have this memory in my mind is the same that I'm playing <clears throat> the guitar. Yeah, it's a pretty. A lot of people have stories like that. Like my first, um, my first guitar, I got it like an antique store, and it was just a real piece of junk for sure. Like, but um, we slapped some new strings on it, and it was a vaguely playable piece of junk. So that's nice. I eventually got uh, got a nicer guitar, but I kind of played that one originally for a long time. Um, what uh, what are some things that you're interested in outside of music? Mm, I really like to uh, practice sport. Mm, I go f for running and um, riding bicycle. Yeah, basic basically these two activities I I like to do. <laughs> another uh, another thing is that this considered sport is to to eat bread. I, every time I, fa I finish one of my scores that you could see you know, on YouTube, that I post, I feel so excited and I, and I usually go to the um, cafeteria uh, in, my neighbor, in my neighborhood and I eat a lot of bread. It's a very good sport for me. Eating bread sounds like one heck of a sport. Um... Yeah, down in Colombia, I imagine a lot of the time the weather's pretty amazing. I can imagine wanting to be outdoors a lot. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's pretty sunny here, too. When it's not just ridiculously hot, Austin, Texas is pretty great climate, especially winters. Winters are great. Um, what's, who would you say is, like, the most important person in your life? Do not ask me this question. Uh... It's difficult, it's difficult. Uh, I think my guitar is the most um, <clears throat> important person. No, it's a, it's, a, it's a joke, I'm kidding. I'm kidding you. Uh, to answer you, uh, more than one, a few of them, the family member, my father, mom, uh, my sister and my brother. Mm, I have a pretty decent little family of favorite people in my life as well. Um, what would you say your favorite YouTube channel is? This question uh, is so so nice because there are plenty of, of artists I mentioned before that are amazing. Mm, some of them, uh, for example, uh, from Brazil, I, I hear one that is called uh, Miguel Robson. He has an incredible talent. He is able to play a complex piece of a song and at the same time to keep a conversation. How? How come he could do that? Um, other guitarists um, from Canada, I remember, uh, I keep right now in my mind, and we come to my mind, Ewan Dobson. This is an incredible talent, no? He has a, a lot of creativity and I appreciate it. Mm, from Peru, some guy who died last year that was called Raul Zarate, yeah? He was an, uh, a legend in South America. Mm -hmm. Other guitarists that uh, I, can, I could mention, uh, no, uh, Julio Silpetuca from Argentina is a, a young boy. He's an incredible talent. Yeah, South America, really specifically, just a super interesting and amazing history musically. Um, obviously, lots of really fantastic guitarists in its history. Um, what's a what's a funny story from your life? Just random story. It is about some performance that I had when I started to play, you know, in uh, on life. Hey, I remember that. I play the song really concentrate in my in my plan to do a very well um, performance, a very good performance. And at the end, I present the the song, and I say the name of it was uh, that song was uh, Nocturne Nine. Nocturne Nine. 
the real name was Pop Knight. And I said to myself, oh, I do something wrong. There were an audience about 100 people. It was a special center about people with syndrome of Down. You can imagine, and one of them, the, the, uh, oh, 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 those guys who has syndrome of Down start uh, like uh, really slow, start to, to laugh. Ho, 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 ho. And soon they start to connect the others, and at the end, all the 100 boys with syndrome of Down start to laugh of ho, 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 toward me. And oh my god, the, the, the only thing that I could do that is all, also laugh about me, so everyone started to laugh about me, it was so funny, it was so, so, so embarrassing. Wow, that would be brutal. I don't think I've ever had an entire audience laugh at me. Not an entire audience. What is a band you really admire or a musician that you really, you're into? Famous music, a band you admire, why? Ah, it's really related with some of the question about your favorite channel. Uh, well, I will, I'm going to say other channels. Um, mm, through online open me, me and Mick, I started to know a very good uh, uh, channel. That is the guitarist. It's quite good, this guy. Or from someone from Russia that is called Jakob. He post original uh, figure style song like me. And we have a very close relation, relationship. I really like how he, he's able to play the song. And you know, this world is so amazing. From other part of the world, so far from here, from Colombia, uh, from Russia, uh, play some internal music totally different than mine. So it's quite good. Um, for example, this interview that is from the United States, uh, it, it, it's incredible these things, how you can be closer with uh, similar likes, no? No, I really sympathize a lot with that. Um, you know, one of the things that was always fun about open mics, like I played tons of open mics when I was just starting out, and it'd be like there's all these people in your town that play all different stuff, and it's kind of fun to hear it all. But the town for this open mic is like the whole world, you know. And um, it's just really interesting, like you said, because you can be totally separate, totally different countries that are just very far apart and different. But like, we're all coming together and make this interesting music and show people what we're doing and stuff. And uh, yeah, it's pretty fascinating. It's a we're lucky to live in this era where we can actually do this stuff. Um, what's an instrument that you really enjoy but, or, but you don't know how to play? Yes, I really like to play quite well piano. I think uh, that instrument uh, has the opportunity to make multiple combinations. And it's really uh, amazing because I think that it's a a very good secret to create create more more songs. That is the thing that I am interested on. Any instrument has two powers. One, to, to learn it, to execute um, lot of internal words of different artists. Or the second is an excellent tool to create 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 music. That is the uh, connected with the question. Um, uh, when I saw my first guitar. Some boys say me you can create. Yeah, I really enjoy a keyboard. I'm gonna figure out some way to play it on the show sometime. It's just like the angles are kind of weird. I can't imagine like doing this on the show or something, but maybe I'll figure it out. I don't know. But it's really great because keyboard is just a super flexible thing. Like you can get synthesizer programs and just make an almost infinite amount of sounds and stuff. Um, but it's not as flexible in some ways as guitar because you can bend the strings and you can play the strings in all different ways and like, I don't know, it's its own thing for sure, but uh, I really like, I like synthesizer and stuff, I've made a lot of sounds in my day. 
Do you play live? Do you play music live? And two days ago, I had a performance, so it was really interesting, and I remember so much uh, this experience. Mm -hmm. It was on the um, Colombian Poet Society. The public really demanding. And um, when I finished my execution, the organizer stand up and started to claim more, more, more. Oh my goodness, the feeling of me was uh, the best, the best, the best. So if you know any gigs, I am ready to play the best performance for the best audience. So just let me know and I will travel to uh, any part. Yes, I will love to do that and I do it with my best passion. Yeah, I wish we were all around here. I could get you gigs. People would line up to listen to you. Um, what is some advice that you would have for musicians who are just kind of starting out? Well, I think that a very good advice could be something in believing what you are doing. If you believe in what you are doing, then others start to believe in what you do. That's it, my advice. It's true. You kind of start believing in yourself and you start acting on that and sometimes if you just, I mean, if you really just stick it out, things start coming together. It's a beautiful thing. Um, if you won $10 million or whatever the equivalent would be, what would you do? If you won it, like, today, what would you do with it? Ha! Oh. If I won 10 uh, millions tonight, I do not hesitate to create a big band. Oh, I love this format and I would put um, Son on my son. I am going to try to put Son on my son on this format. Yes, that's it. That's a heck of an answer. A $10 million super band. That's probably what I would do, honestly. What is your favorite color and what is some random thing that is that color? I do not have any preference about colors, but uh, since I start my channel, I choose the blue color. Why the blue color? color? Because the blue color is refreshed, cool, it's not aggressive, and it's nice. Even though the color of the sea is blue, that is uh, my chip and navigate through the sea. Okay, the color of my guitar is blue. The chairs of my furniture my, my furniture eh, eh, are blue. Mm, some clothes that I have is the same, blue. Even the eh, Navarquia logo is blue. No, you really rock the blue, no doubt about it. Um, well, it's been really fun having you on the show like this. I know that your fans are just going nuts watching this. Love to hear more from you and everything. We'll figure out more th collaborations to do in the future, too. I'm trying to think of stuff. And actually, if anybody out there in the audience can think of like something collaborative that would be really cool for some of these open mic artists to do, um, let me know in the comments. I'm, I'm definitely listening. You have my ear. But uh, anyway, Fernando, it's been really fun and glad to have you, man. And thank you so much for inviting me on this uh, amazing interview. Well, next, fresh out of Nacogdoches, Texas, we have somebody who's actually a pretty good friend of mine, um, Jonathan Hubbard. He's from a band called The Horror Cosmic. And they're kind of blowing up right now, so this is some early, you know, archival footage kind of thing. But, um, yeah, really creative guy, very deep thinker, Mr. Philosophy, and, you know, a lot of personality in his music, very passionate about composition and playing, and loves just all kinds of stuff. Um, Jonathan Hubbard, welcome to the show. Hey! Uh, thanks for having me on, Mark. I really appreciate it. So hit us with the name of your channel, music you play, instrument you play, so on. So the name of uh, our channel is the horror, and our band is the Horror Cosmic. 
you can find us on YouTube, and we have a Facebook page as well. I've also got another ch uh, channel that I do philosophy and history videos called Before You Leap. So if people are interested in that, they can they can check that out also. I play guitar. I can play a bunch of different instruments, but in the band I play acoustic guitar usually, and on uh, some songs I play an electric, um, and then uh, I sing and do most. And I do uh, I sing and I do most of the uh, uh, songwriting and arranging and stuff. No, it's good stuff. Um, love the candlelight ensemble too. It's, you know, it's appropriate for your horror cosmic thing. Where are you from originally? Well, I grew up in Lufkin, Texas, which is a smallish, I guess kind of medium-sized town uh, in deep east Texas. There's really, uh, I guess Houston's about two hours away and Austin's about four or five hours away. There's not really a whole lot to do here. I, I moved to Nacogdoches, which is a little north of Lufkin, um, when I was about 20, so about 10 years ago or so. And um, yeah, I really, I really enjoy, I enjoy it here a lot. For all the listeners out there, me and my wife Brittany actually have visited um, Johnny and uh, his wife out there in Nacogdoches, and it's a fun little town. It's got a lot of charm to it, a little bit of quirk, um, but yeah, and it gets a lot of cool gigs out there that we try to um, try to enjoy. Actually, I opened for him one time, which was fun. Um, what's one album, if you had to pick one, that you've just listened to and just worn out? So, one album I've listened to over and over again is um, when I was in high school, I have really fond memories of listening to By The Way by the Red Hot Chili Peppers over and over again. I would fall asleep to it every night for like, I don't know, it must have been months, I think, or weeks and weeks. I just, I really love the guitar playing on that, and I like the surf arrangements um, with all, it's just such a neat record. It's, it's very, it manages to be very psychedelic without falling too much into, like, like obvious 60s tropes or anything like that. It's it's a very trippy and, and a cool, relaxing record. I like it a lot. Yeah, I definitely remember when that album dropped. It was just like everywhere. You know, people really loved it. I mean, in, in some ways, it's like I know it probably wasn't their biggest album, but it feels, in some visceral way, it just feels like it was. But uh, yeah, John Frusciante, really great guitarist, played with the Mars Volta for a while there or at least on uh, Francis the Mute. Um, how would you say you became interested in music in the first place? I, you know, I, I really couldn't tell you honestly because I, I have been interested in music my whole life. I don't really remember a time when I wasn't interested in music. So, uh, I mean, I was, I was listening to, to music in a, a focused way on my own when I was seven or eight and before that I always loved it. I mean, I think, um, now, interested in playing music, that was when I was about nine or ten or something. I was still pretty young and um, started playing guitar, uh, got interested in it because they were around the house. My stepdad at the time played guitar. Uh, he hadn't played in a long time or anything, but he had them and we had amps and stuff in the house. And I, I was always kind of afraid to, to ask to mess with it, but then I got a little older and I, I got interested in it and started, and started to basically to just teach myself. I fell in love with it from the very first time I, I actually played guitar. I remember sitting on the edge of my bed and just obviously not able to play, <laughs> just sort of like hitting strings over and over again and, and making noises, but uh, it was it was weird. I, a lot of people uh, get frustrated and discouraged uh, when they first play guitar because it's so hard the first few weeks to, to start out, but that was never a problem for me. I, 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 am, I loved it immediately. Yeah, that is very true. I taught, I think we've talked about it before, I've taught guitar. At one time I had like 20 students, and uh, it is like for me, when I was playing, I played just, I think it was during a summer off of school or something, and like, I just played like 10 hours a day or something crazy, because I just wanted to not suck. And like, it didn't take me that long to make some, some real progress, and uh, plus, you know, when you're young and you're kind of big-headed about it, you think you sound great. So, um, that probably helped a little bit, and I still think I sound great, though I hope I'm a little more credible at this point. Um, but anyway, yeah, just powering through it is pretty important. What was your first instrument? Yeah, I got my first instrument. Uh, it was a guitar that was given to me uh, by my stepdad. So um, yeah, that's the guitar I had for a long time. And then I bought one later on in high school. And I've kind of had different ones over the years. Solid 
Um, what other types of things do you like to do outside of music or other interests you have, pursuits? Uh, my favorite thing to do outside of music, well, I think it's probably to work on my, my YouTube, my other YouTube channel. Um, I really enjoy philosophy and history and just reading a lot in general and, and making little videos about it. Um, yeah, that's basically it. My, my favorite thing to do is to read. I, I just read a ton. Um, I also like video games a lot. Um, lately, I haven't really been playing too much, but I really like Overwatch and Doom and a few other games. Yeah, I used to play games a lot. Really, music started to eclipse that sort of in my late teens or whatever, but I played a, a lot of real-time strategies, which is kind of not that popular a genre of game anymore. But I played Total Annihilation and some StarCraft and Age of Empires and things like that. And I actually designed units and designed maps and whole campaigns and stuff because they made the, the source code like open source at a certain point so people could modify things. But uh, anyway, what's the um, most important, who's the most important person in your life? So the, uh, the most important person in my life is, is my wife, of course. Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't really have a whole lot else to say other than that I love her very much and she's the most important person to me. Yeah, same here. What uh, what would you say your favorite YouTube channel is, other than M3 Great Riffs? My favorite YouTube channel. This this is actually uh, this will be be fun because I, I love this channel. <laughs> um, it's called Cinema Massacre. It's a fairly well known channel, but if people there might be people that don't know about it. Uh, but it's basically it's mainly James Rolfe and uh, Mike, uh, motherfucker Mike. <laughs> Um, they basically, it's, it's a mainly a video game channel. They, they do, uh, there's a show called Angry Video Game Nerd that's, re that I really enjoy a lot. He plays old video games and, and, uh, makes sort of somewhat satirical angry reviews about them. Uh, but he, act he actually does do a, a good job of sort of breaking down things that amount to bad game design versus good game design. And there's a lot of other really great stuff on it too, though. Just, uh, nostalgia, uh, re uh, uh reviews from old movies and... All, all kinds of really cool stuff. So uh, yeah, if, if you like old horror movies or movies in general or video games and that, and uh, especially stuff from the 80s and 90s, you should definitely check it out. It's a really fun channel. Yeah, the, on YouTube there really are a lot of um, game-oriented channels, of course, and re movie review channels and stuff that are super funny. It's kind of one of those things I wish I would have gotten in on. Um, I actually started on YouTube like just about as YouTube was starting years and years ago, of course. But somehow I just never kept posting stuff and uh, it's a real shame. Cause just about everybody that like started on YouTube originally and kept going is like filthy rich now. What's like a random funny story from 